Let's continue with data trees, but uh, before we start, uh, let's refresh a little bit about lists. In Grasshopper, it's all about managing lists that can contain numbers, points, curves, surfaces, text, etc. All the data that flows uh, through your Grasshopper definition is in the form of a list. A panel component are important tools to visualize data. So let's create a sequence number with the series component. So on the left hand side of the panel column, I have created a series of sequential integers. So these are the indexes of the list of numbers that the component is outputting. The indexes tell us about the relative position of each item in a list. List indexes always start at zero, containing values that can be of any data type. Above, we can see this formatted set of numbers in brackets. This is called path information. So many components operate in individual values and also output individual values. Um, other category of components create list of data from single input values. So for example, you have a curve, you input this value into a divide curve and you will get as an output a list of points. Curing also the opposite behavior, you can have a list of curves and you can love them all together and getting as an output one single item that this is a surface. Many components only operate on list of data and also output list of data. For example, you are sorting out uh, the list. So you have a list that is unsorted. You use the sort component and the output will be the sorted list. And finally, the tree some few components output several lists of points, each of them representing a row or a column in a grid. As you can see here, uh, you can have a surface that is a single item, and then you can subdivide your surface, uh, getting as an output a tree of rows and columns. We can also access to specific items in this data tree. Having, for example, a tree of rows and columns, you can access to each of the items inside this tree. We can also just operate by keeping or modifying this data structure. Use certain operators and what you will get as an output is a modified uh, data tree. Let's check with a few examples what are the different possibilities with data trees. So as we said, data trees are list of lists. They are nested lists inside of other lists. Here I have a set of uh, curves uh, drawn in Rhino that are linked into Grasshopper. They are referenced as a planar curves and we just want to divide them. So. Uh, we will divide them in a different uh, number of segments, that's uh, two segments, and what we get as an output is a list of lists. So for each of those lines, one, two, three, we have one, two, three branches and with three um, points inside of a list. So there is a very handy uh, component that it's called param viewer. Here we can display how the information is organized inside of a um, data tree structure. So we see that there is uh, a data with three branches. If we make a double click, we all see a small diagram of how the, this structure is organized. So the main difference here is that there is a single uh, list entrance. So this is the continuous line and the output is the dashed line that it's turned into a data tree. So 
We can visualize this information very uh, easily with the point list component. Let's preview it. And here we see how the data is organized. So we have three points, 0, 1, and 2 in each of these curves. So they also have different colors because this means that each color is a different branch of a tree. So for example, if we uh, use a polyline to connect these points, we see that the data tree structure is maintained. So now we have three polylines in group number one, group number two, and group number three. So let's continue and see how can we filter out uh, the information coming from a tree. So as we said, a data tree structure is no more than list of lists. So at the end, we can uh, filter out information in the same way as we did with, uh, with the list. So we can find all these components in sets list. So here we can find simple operations of how to sort out information uh, and also in sequence. Here we can create repetitive patterns in order to uh, organize information in different ways. We can select single objects from uh, this data tree structure. So I have connected the um, list item to the previous divide curve component. And let's see if we again visualize the information that we want to display. Um, here we can select the item. We can visualize this uh, placing a, a sphere, for example. And you see that every time that we select a specific uh, position, a specific index in this list, we can reference, for example, geometries. If you flatten the data structure, what we achieve with this is to cut the tree. So let's say we are deleting any type of data structure contained and converting it into a single list. So you see now that the parent viewer turned into a single branch. And if we want to display the information, we see that we are jumping from uh, one curve to another without having restrictions of uh, being grouped uh, in different uh, separated branches. There are other different type of components that you can also find it under um, set list. For example, this is the list length. We can always look at how many items is contained in each of the of the branches. So as you can see now, since we have the data tree structure, so we have three items in every branch. In the same way as before, we can always flatten this information. And instead of having how many elements per branch we have, now we will have the whole amount of elements. Another very interesting um, component is the shift list. So here we are able to move and displace uh, elements inside of a list. For example, here is uh, asking for list to shift. Then we have a shift offset and a wrap value. So we just need to um, place a point list component in order to visualize how the information is placed inside of uh, our geometries. So now if we start to move the slider, we will see that the information has been moved towards next positions. 
and if we change the wrap value to true, what it will happen is that we will not delete the information, but it will be moved uh, to the beginning of the list. So let's see some other operations that we can do with data trees. You can find the graph tree under sets tree. You can also graph the tree always in each of the components by right clicking on the mouse and you can graph, flatten, reverse or simplify um, the data structures. This is like a shortcut. For example, if we uh, graphed our previous list, um, let's reduce a little bit the amount because it's going to be easier to, to visualize. So right now what is happening is that for each of the elements that were inside of one of these three branches of each curve, now we are turning uh, each of the elements into a new branch. So now you see the three branches as what's uh, simple as what we had before. But from each uh, branch, it's coming out another, another three more. We are just um, cutting the tree or flattening the tree. So we have the whole list in one single list and in the same way as what we were doing before you can always place um, information or uh, geometries every time that you are filtering out let's finish our data tree tutorial uh, by building together a brick wall so this is the definition and we are gonna just do it step by step. So here I have a curve that I have drawn in Rhino. I will move it uh, in C direction at a certain distance. We are merging them together uh, even though we could even split this uh, step by just uh, connecting the, the curve into the loft component and then the move uh, geometry um, by pressing shift uh, then we have the same result. So by lofting these two curves we are getting a surface that is our boundary surface where we will use it for creating the curvature of our design. Here we are going to use a, a component that is a divide surface uh, let's turn on this component and with this component what we are uh, getting is uh, a lot of uh, point divisions uh, and um, normal vectors and the UV parameters. Since our brick wall will have a certain height for the bricks we need to make sure that the U and V division of our surface has a proportion that uh, looks uh, something more or less realistic and we don't have geometries floating in, in space. After um, dividing our surface we see that we have a dashed line so that, that means that our points are organized as a tree structure. Uh, then we can actually flatten them but let's have a look before uh, what are the, the differences. So here I have a point list component and if we preview on, I'm going to just turn off this other component to look at it more clearly. So we see that our surface is organized in different branches. So we have the first row and we have columns. So it always goes from zero till 16 and in the next row start again from 0 to 16 and so on. Um, after flattening our points what we will get is a single 
list, so there is no more a uh, tree structure, so that's why it starts in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until 16, but then for the next row that is coming back to the origin, it just continue with the next number, it's 17, 18, 19, at the end we will have 237 elements. So let's have a look how we want to create our pattern. So this is basically element that we are skipping, then there is a brick, we skip another element, then it's another brick coming and so on. You can create a pattern like this by using a cool pattern. Let's turn off here. We can see if we uh, turn on this cool pattern that can be found in set, sequence, and cool pattern. It's just asking for a list to cool. This is our list of uh, points that we have. And it's also asking for a cooling pattern. So, and this is just a list of Boolean true false. So as we want to skip every uh, first or every second, so we can say false true or you can do a true false and then you see that our pattern just flipped it's important to have both the same so if you don't want to uh, repeat information you can also share this for both um, it's very important that uh, when you uh, introduce this information, you have a multi-line data. We make sure that in the first position we have a true and in the second position uh, is a false. So next step is basically we want to place a geometry that is uh, our brick and has a certain orientation uh, along the surface. So for this we want to use a plane, but as you can see, if we just insert a plane, and by default it's just using the wall coordinate from Rhino. So they are all oriented the same, but this is not what we want. What we want is to have the orientation of the surface. So that's why we want to use uh, evaluate surface component let's turn off here because we because we want to get some vectors that is going to allow us to orient the planes uh, along the surface construct plane and um, that is asking for our origin and these are our uh, cooling uh, pattern planes that are already waiting for being used here uh, and some of them they will be more or less uh, coincident but you see that is a slight difference no so if we display both planes uh, we will see that the default one is just orthogonal to the world and the plane that uh, follows the surface is taking the x direction of the plane from the V direction of the surface. So wash out which one of the vectors you are taking because of course if you take a different one you will flip uh, the planes in a different direction and in our final step we just want to generate a brick that it's a basically a standard brick that has uh, these dimensions in centimeters, 25, 12, and 6 uh, brick height. Um, we need to be very careful with the information that we type because sometimes the component asks for something very specific, uh, like for example here it's create a box uh, center on a plane, that means that this box has uh, a plane just in the center. And if we give dimensions, it will always take the dimensions from the center. So that's why we are inserting an expression. And this is a small uh, mathematical operation and means that 
uh, it's only going to take the half because uh, it's taking the center. If we don't have this information, at the end, what we will have is from the center, 25. So, and now we have our brick and we have our planes. So what we want to do now is to orient this brick into all these planes. So in Grasshopper it's very easy because uh, there is a component that uh, it's called orient our geometry. Here is our brick that we want to, to place uh, into our planes. The initial plane is from where do you want to reference your geometry and since uh, by default this component is just creating the brick in the zero 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 in the space of Rhino we don't need to give uh, any because it's matching and then our final plane is just our target planes so if we select our orient component we see that we have placed in each of these planes a brick 